And welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. I'm very uh, happy and honored to say that we are joined right now by Elliot Abrams, and he, of course, is Senior Fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, former Deputy National Security Advisor to President George W. Bush. And uh, great to talk to you again, sir. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. Glad to be back. Well, thank you. Okay, um, 77 uh, people uh, such as yourself, distinguished uh, um, uh, uh, people who have uh, had uh, the kind of experience that matters, uh, signing a letter to Congress asking them uh, not to give in on Iran sanctions. Of course, uh, there are, to my best knowledge, about 75 possibly senators who uh, want to pass a sanctions bill with regards to the uh, uh, Iran arms deal. And, uh, of course, Harry Reid won't bring it up because the president doesn't want him to. You know, I think it's bizarre. I mean, if you were in the middle of this negotiation, the Senate was going to pass and the Congress was going to pass a bill that imposed sanctions tomorrow morning, I could see the president saying, hold on, we're negotiating. The bill we're talking about might, might impose sanctions a year down the road. What it does is strengthen the president's negotiating hand by saying to Iran, if you guys screw around or if we do a deal and you guys cheat, there are going to be heavy sanctions. I, I just I think it's really quite bizarre that the president thinks we have to be so careful of offending the poor, sensitive Ayatollahs. And, and, by, and by the way, so, you know, while we're being so sensitive about the poor Ayatollahs, what are they doing? I mean, they call us every name in the book. Their foreign minister goes to Beirut, where he lays a wreath at the grave of Imad Mugnia, a Hezbollah terrorist who killed more Americans than anybody else until 9-11. Uh, and they're shipping arms to Bahrain, to rebels there. I mean, they are they're playing the same game with us, and we're just walking on eggshells here. And, and, of course, this president, as it turned out, uh, has made effort after effort and had been re re rebuffed at every turn in trying to reach out to the Iranian president and shake his hand and meet with him. And they've kept saying no, no, no. Yep. Uh, and then yep. they started secret talks and, and didn't tell us. And then they said, oh, we couldn't meet at the U.N., but guess what? Uh, I called the guy in his car, and now we should have an agreement in about two weeks. And it's like, where did that come from? And now, now we know where that came from. Well, you know, I think... Part of the problem here is the way the administration sees this is, oh, the old confrontation with Iran is going to be over, and we're going to have outreach and engagement, and we're going to be friends, and this is a great historic turning point. That's how the president seems to see it, and Secretary Kerry. The way the Iranians seem to see it is the Americans are backing off, and now we can just quietly and slowly uh, get nuclear weapons. Maybe we'll slow down a little bit on the path to nuclear weapons. They're not interested in friendship. They're not interested in engagement. They're interested in ending the sanctions and still creeping ahead toward nuclear weapons. And I don't really know how anybody could see it any other way. And it's interesting, isn't it, sir? Uh, at least to me, uh, I'd be interested to hear your comments when the uh, Israeli uh, defense uh, minister, uh, deputy defense minister, I think, uh, uh, criticized John Kerry right away. The State Department demanded an immediate apology. Yet, as you say, uh, Iran every day, the chief negotiator in this deal, the day after, I think last Sunday, they announced it was solidified. That same day, later on, the uh, chief negotiator says, we could do this, we could do that, we're going to continue this. We're going to continue that. As you say, they trashed the United States. They honor terrorists who have killed Americans. Uh, and nothing. We, we, we then say to them, what more can we do for you, gentlemen? It's insane. Well, it is. And, and you know, this is why our uh, allies in the region, start with Israel and some of the Arabs as well, are afraid. Uh, they're afraid because they're wondering, what, what's the matter with you guys? Don't you see what Iran is up to? And all you're doing is, frankly, kissing up to the Iranians and not calling them on any of this conduct of theirs. And so what they're wondering is, you know, how far is Iran going to go and when will you Americans wake up? All right. We're talking to uh, Elliot Abrams, senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, former deputy national security advisor to President George W. Bush uh, here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Let me ask you about the, uh, the Benghazi uh, report that came out. Uh, the media going way, way out of its way. If they do say State Department in regard to culpability, uh, they do not mention Hillary Clinton's name. Is is she gonna go, is she gonna skate away free on this? I mean, because if she announces that she's gonna run, it's gonna be the same media, and I can't picture them 
taking her to task. Her, what difference does it make, uh, the fact that no one was fired, no one was held accountable, we have no answers, yet we know that the State Department did not provide the adic adequate security that they should have, and in addition to denied eventually Ambassador Stevens' request for more security. And, you know, she's skating around and then she's going to run for president. Yeah, well, you're asking me if I think she's going to get away with it. I think there's a good, a good chance. You know, one of the things that emerges in that report is looking at the circumstances there. The CIA did increase security for its post there. It's only the State Department that looked at it and said no. Um, and, you know, it looks as if, as you said, uh, she's going to escape. Remember what happened in the first report on this. They didn't even interview her. The, the review board, the so-called accountability right. review board, did not interview Hillary Clinton. So, uh, you know, there is a concerted effort here, I think, uh, on the part of uh, what I've called the New York Times, a division of the Hillary Clinton campaign known as the New York Times. I mean, the Times report on all this is really, uh, particularly the headlines, are designed to let her off the hook. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Let me let me ask you uh, about what's going on in, in the Middle East with uh, the talks uh, uh, between Kerry and and, uh, and the Palestinians and Netanyahu. I mean, is there a, a reality? Is there a danger? In my view, it would be a danger that um, that that in any way, shape, or form, the Israeli government is going to acquiesce to these pre sixty seven borders and and getting rid of the West Bank, or is this just you know more of the same? I mean, because you would think you would think that a boss with, with all this on the table and all the and, and this t time of, of shuttle diplomacy, if you will, with Kerry, would go out of his way not to do anything inflammatory. But he hasn't stopped. He praised uh, the, the, the uh, recently praised uh, uh, homicide, suicide bombers who were released from Israel, honored them. And the same type of rhetoric will never recognize Israel, you know, blah, blah, blah. So my, my question to you is, you probably have your finger on the pulse of the uh, Netanyahu government better than I do. But I, I you know, from what you hear, I, it, it frightens me that they're even entertaining any of this rather than dismissing it out of hand. I hearken back to when uh, Netanyahu lectured Obama in the Oval Office on why they could never consider the pre-67 borders. Yeah. I don't think Kerry, frankly, is going to get anywhere. I mean, one of the things that happened in this past week is that Abbas, the Palestinian leader, hardened his position on the refugee question and basically said all refugees have to have the right to go back to Israel, which is ridiculous. Um, so I, I just don't see anything happening there. The one thing that was interesting that did happen, uh, even yesterday actually, Netanyahu went to Jordan and met with the King of Jordan. Because these are two guys who frankly have their heads screwed on right. They're worried about security issues. They're worried about the Jordan River. They're worried about all those terrorists up in Syria. These are serious people. And I just think that the chances that Kerry will achieve an agreement are zero. What he may achieve is the continuing negotiation for another year. But if he ever thought he was going to get the Israelis to agree to all of this, um, I've never understood why he was optimistic about it. And I think He's really not being, uh, he's just not looking at the realities of the situation. All right. Listen, always uh, an honor and a pleasure to talk to you, sir. I hope you'll come back. I will. Good to talk to you. Thank, thank you very much. Elliot Abrams, uh, folks, uh, senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, former Deputy National Security Advisor to President George W. Bush. Boy, I love saying President George W. Bush. <laughs> Makes me want to cry <laughs> where we are today, not only, of course, on, on, uh, on national affairs, but where we are today with every single issue involving the United States of America domestically, foreign policy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a mess. Okay, when uh, we come back, uh, James Carville and Mary Mac Madeline will be here. They have a new book out. And, uh, yeah, we've talked to uh, Mary before, but never to James. And I uh, wonder, should I bring up the line he once used on Meet the Press, which at the time I played over and over and over and over again? Nah, I shouldn't bring it up. Should I bring it up to you? Ah, maybe. Eh, I'll tell you about it later. All right, Steve Malsberg Show. We're coming back. Newsmax TV and radio.